Hey guys, what's going on? Justin here with Justin and Ashley's Bargains, also Airheart Adventures here on YouTube. Now, Ashley and I are gonna be making some educational content to help you guys a little bit more. I'm on my way to a storage unit, so I'm banging out a couple of pieces of content. Um, for people who wanted to understand a little bit more of how you even get into storage buying. So I'm gonna give you the five tips that I've learned um, that, you know, really this year is 2022, it's beginning of June. We've already bought, I think about 50 units total since October, so maybe about 30 this year so far. So, you know, it's not one of those things where like, oh, one or two, there's people about hundreds, hundreds, thousands of units. We've bought um, pretty close to about 50 or 60 in, in right about seven or eight months. So we are really pumping them out and there's a lot of things that we learned. And plus I have a little bit of a history of it 10 plus years ago of buying units. So uh, number one is you wanna pay attention to the auctions around you. Now, unfortunately due to COVID, there's not a lot of live auctions and most of them have transitioned to online. And there's three real main ones. Like one of them I, I do all the time is storagetreasures.com. Another one they have is storageauctions.net and then LockerFox is one they have as well. Now these are three common sites, really good sites that you can use to look at lockers around you. So um, you wanna pay attention to the auction types. You also wanna reach out to some of the owners of facilities maybe around you and say, hey, you know, I just wanna know if you guys do any auctions. And if you do, are they in person or do you do them online? One of the people we met through our bargains group, she said that she uh, has she has a couple facilities that her and her husband own and that she does um, auctions in person. And I'm like, and they're really close to us. I'm like, hey, in the next auction you have, please keep us in mind and let us know so we can come to them. And so that's one of the big things you wanna consider is, is how far are auctions nearest. Number two is how are you going to transport the goods? That can kind of be a challenge. You know, we had to buy, um, or we actually traded my wife's um, Hyundai, which, you know, we weren't driving anyways. Our mobile de detailer who comes in, cleans our um, our other cars that we drive around, he was like, hey, I know you said you're looking for a truck, so I was using our brand new Kia to drive around. Our Kia Sorento has a trailer hitch, and I didn't want to keep putting wear and tear on it. So what I did was I turned around and was like, hey, um, you, know, we're, you know, we're looking for a truck, blah, 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 and he talked to my wife and I, and we decided to trade his, uh, daughter had this this truck this Silverado this GMC whatever the hell it is and we traded it you know and then we also had this trailer we had already bought when we first started but it's a small little uh, probably five by eight trailer and sometimes it can be difficult so a lot of times when people do storage buying they're like okay I got a I got a unit but the difficulty is transportation how they're gonna get it so a lot of the times it's glorified on TV uh, and there's nothing wrong with this. Storage Wars made me get into storage unit buying, but there's a lot of things we learned that are different than what they show online as far as they don't show the, the hard work that you have to do for it. And I'm not afraid of hard work. Hopefully you're not either. Um, so you have to make sure that you can actually transport the items. So making sure that you have a location to buy units, either online or close to you, how you're going to transport them. Number three that I would consider is how you're going to store your items. If you have a large shed um, or a garage that is open and untapped, is that's how you're gonna store the items. So when you bring them home, if you sort them at the unit, uh, which we do most of the time, we'll sort it all at the unit, and then we'll know what's trash, we'll know what's actually like just, we're gonna sell it for cheap, and other stuff we have to research, right? So being able to store it is a big thing. Where are you gonna put it at? Number four is how are you going to off-sell it? Are you going to list it on Marketplace? You can sell on eBay. Are you going to do swap meets? Are you gonna be doing yard sales? There's a combination of all four that you could do. My wife and I, we, you know, my main, my main business is uh, marketing. I have a marketing agency. So I'm really good at marketing and creating a community. We have about five, almost 500 people inside of a Facebook group. And that's where we offload almost everything first. Then after that, I'll go to Facebook Marketplace. And then after that, we'll put items on eBay. So we kind of have a system of offloading. And that's taking a little tweaking. Even how we set up our garage is a, a giant uh, U-shape where we have items that we, we you know, are sorting and, and going through, a listing table where we take our pictures, a storage section with a bunch of shelves on the right side, and then a shipping area on the right side in case we have orders we have to ship. So knowing how you're going to offload the product that you do have is a big thing because sometimes you'll get you know, in storage wars, they show you one or two big items that you that you find. You go to some crazy person. It doesn't work that way most of the time, right? Like you're not gonna 
just have one or two. They don't show you what they do with the thousands of other items they have. So that can be a big thing for you. Um, number five is knowing when to cut stuff out. And when I say cut stuff out, that is either doing, we will do what's called leftover auctions inside of our group, where we will take bundles of stuff that we have that have been there for about two months, and we will just get them all out in a massive bulk. So we have resellers in our group who will buy bulk from us. And it's not necessarily stuff that just didn't sell and we want to get rid of it. We go through so much merchandise sometimes, we don't get to list everything. We'll pull the higher items out that we're like, oh, these are, these are really good items. We want to hang on to them but other stuff that's like just that miscellaneous home decor toys that just we haven't listed or some stuff that we haven't sold just get rid of it and we do that and i, I highly encourage you guys to be able to make money from it versus uh, just throwing it in the trash you can always establish your business which i recommend you do at least an llc talk to a tax person for that but set up an LLC so if you do donate stuff with Goodwill you get the receipt you register it so that way at tax time it counts as a write-off for you so those are really the five major areas that I recommend you focus on when it comes if you want to get into it, at least understanding what you got to do you have to um, do all five of these things at a bare minimum and just know what you're getting yourself into guys so hopefully that helps if you have any questions about storage auction buying uh, make sure you check it out I'm gonna see if Ashley wants to do some tips um, that she wants to create and come up with as well so that way she has some some input on this what she's learned from it um, so yeah if you guys want to check it out make sure you guys do it